So again, welcome. We are going to talk tonight about offside. We are not going to do uh, a lot of recap on the specific law that we will go over it here for a brief moment, um, but we're going to focus a lot of our attention on interfering with an opponent and gaining an advantage, two of the three uh, categories of offside. So really, really quickly, just to refresh our memory, this is a screenshot from the IFAB laws of the game. We have three scenarios where we consider a player uh, in an offside position to be guilty of an offside infraction. The first one, interfering with play by touching or playing or touching a ball that is passed or touched by a teammate. That's the most straightforward one. It's the one that we're the most familiar with. Player A play, passes the ball to player B who is in an offside position. Player B touches the ball offside by interfering with play, by playing or touching a ball. The two more nuanced ones um, that often find us the most difficulty during the games are interfering with an opponent by preventing an opponent from playing the ball or clearly obstructing the opponent's line of vision, challenging an opponent for the ball, clearly attempting to play the ball, which is close when this action impacts an opponent, or making an obvious action which clearly impacts the ability of the opponent to play the ball. Those are the four categories for interfering with an opponent. Or by gaining an advantage by playing the ball or interfering with an opponent when it has either rebounded or deflected off the goalpost, crossbar, match official, or opponent, or has been deliberately saved by an opponent. Now the word deliberately saved is important in this because per the next line, a player is in an offside position, excuse me, a player in an offside position receiving a ball from an opponent who deliberately plays the ball, except from a deliberate save, is not considered to have gained an advantage. So if somebody deliberately plays the ball and it goes to a player who's in the offside position, we would not consider that person guilty of an offside infraction because they have received the ball from an opponent who has played it deliberately. The only time we say somebody who can, it can be guilty of an offside infraction when they get the ball off of a deflection or something is if it's been deliberately saved. So the only deliberate action that can still gain or can consider somebody being in an offside uh, position and guilty of an offside infraction is on a save that has been done deliberately. Most frequently, this is going to be by a goalkeeper. And then for uh, the purposes of definition, down at the bottom here, the laws give us uh, what a save is when a player stops or attempts to stop a ball which is going into or very close to the goal with any part of the body except the hand or the arm, unless, of course, it's the goalkeeper. So we're going to just briefly see with our clips tonight uh, a couple of examples of interfering with play. We're going to move by those pretty quickly because those are what we're accustomed to seeing. And we're going to focus most of our energy this evening on uh, some of the nuances of interfering with an opponent and gaining an advantage. Any questions or anything unclear about that quick re reading of uh, the law regarding offside? Wonderful, so next thing here is just a very quick cheat sheet. Um, these are just the considerations we wanna be thinking about with the three areas of offside. Interfering with play, we need to have a touch on the ball or a play on the ball for that to come into consideration. For interfering with an opponent, and again, um, when we're calling someone offside for interfering with an opponent, we need to be thinking about, did they block the line of vision? Did they challenge for the ball somehow? Was there a clear attempt to play the ball with an impact on the opponent? Or was there an action that otherwise had an impact on the opponent? Those are the four things we need to be thinking about if we're going to consider interfering with an opponent for an offside infraction. And then for gaining an advantage, was it a rebound? Was it a deflection? Was it a save? Were they interfering somehow? And really important, was it deliberate? We can negate offside by a deliberate play unless it was a save. So take just a moment, if you would, and take a picture of your screen or screenshot it, something along the lines that you can refer back to this um, as we go through the video clips and, uh, and take a look at the various uh, factors in our decision. So take just a moment. I'm going to pause and cough for a second, and you can take a picture of this.
So again, what we're going to spend most of the evening talking about are the second and the third categories here, interfering with an opponent and gaining an advantage. With the gaining an advantage, I think, being uh, the most difficult one. So I really want to draw your attention to uh, the rebound, the deflection, save, and uh, interfering there. And we'll talk a lot about deliberate when we look at clips. All right. So moving us along then. Let me get us out of that. And get us into the clips we want to look at. So just to refresh our memory, a couple of very quick examples of... Uh, participating with play or interfering with play. These are pretty simple offside decisions. We will get uh, pauses at the moment of truth. Please disregard the, uh, the assistant referees here and their delayed flags. Uh, this is the World Cup. They are using VAR. So as you can see here, we have a player nearer to the goal line than the second to last opponent when the ball is played who then goes and plays the ball that is considered interfering with play. One more, again, just very brief. <coughs> Player in offside position plays the ball, nice and straightforward. Sister referee puts the flag up. Again, as you can see here, player is in an offside position when the ball is played. Ball goes to him. He plays the ball. At the moment he plays the ball there, he is guilty of offside for interfering with play. So again, those are just very straightforward offside decisions, the ones we're the most accustomed to calling. No real need to dive into those. So now we move ourselves into uh, some interfering with an opponent clips. So the first we're going to look at here is an example of a player who has interfered with an opponent. So we'll give a watch and then I will give you a freeze frame so we get a sense of what we're talking about here. The red team is attacking. And now I will pause it. So at the moment this shot is taken, this player here in red is in an offside position. I know it's a little hard to see. There are replays that give us a better sense of the offside, but take my word for it. He's about a half a body offside here. So he's in the offside position when the shot is taken. And as you can see, this blue player attempts to block it. And this red player makes an attempt to play the ball also, which impacts the defender's ability to cleanly play this ball. So this is a good example of a player who from an offside position is interfering with an opponent by making a clear action to try to play the ball. We would want to consider that player guilty of an offside infraction. A couple of replays here to look at. As you can see, shot gets taken. Player sticks his head in definitely in the way trying to get in the way of playing the ball definitely has an impact on the opponent another replay for us here you can see better there he was in an offside position and again impacting the ability of this defender to play the ball so this is an example where we would want to call a player offside here for interfering their opponent from an offside position. A couple of more examples. Some very nervous fans. Lengthy restart here. So here we have a goal scored. I'll replay it for you really quickly. And when we go back and watch this again, we want to keep our eyes on this player. Oops. So when the ball gets played here, we have number eight 
in an offside position. The ball gets headed by number two. Number eight is in an offside position. The ball passes in front of him and goes into the goal. This is a scenario where, again, we're going to consider the various factors we talked about. He is not impeding the vision of the goalkeeper. He doesn't make any kind of action to try to play the ball. He doesn't move towards it. He doesn't try to stick his head in. He doesn't make any kind of clear action to play that ball. He just watches it go past him from an offside position. And nothing that he does there has any impact on the goalkeeper. So as a result, we would not consider this an offside infraction, though he was in an offside position here when this ball is headed by number two. But because he is not blocking the goalkeeper's vision and because he does not make an attempt to play the ball and he doesn't do anything to really have an impact on the goalkeeper here, we would not consider this player guilty of an offside infraction. We would keep the flag down and consider that a good goal. We'll get a couple of additional replays here to get a better sense. So again here, ball headed. You can get the sense he's clearly in an offside position, but look at the amount of space between himself and the ball. He's not really in the way at all. Doesn't have any ability to play that ball. Doesn't make a lunging motion towards it. Doesn't do anything different. And as you can see here, the goalkeeper is not at all impacted by this. Never had a chance. So because that player doesn't get involved at all, we don't want to see a flag go up here for offside. A couple more replays for you. see here nowhere near the ball doesn't make any kind of motion towards it so as a result we keep our flag down another example So all these things that I'm talking about, the, the blocking division, the, the clear action to play the ball, that's all the, the considerations and the terminology we need to be thinking about when we're analyzing these clips. Another very similar clip. Is there any material impact on the players involved? Is there any clear action to play the ball? So at the moment, this ball is headed into the goal. We have that player there heads the ball. We have number five and number nine both in offside positions. But as you can see here, no impact on the goalkeeper to try to play that ball. So as a result, we want to keep our flag down here. Clear line of sight for the goalkeeper. No clear action toward the ball to try to play it. Doesn't material impact anybody involved in the play. Good goal. We keep our flag down here. A couple more angles to look at. This one gives you a good sense at the moment the ball is played, how far the offside player is. Nowhere close to playing this ball. No action towards it. Goalkeeper not impacted. We keep our flag down. Another good example. See here, nowhere near it. That's probably the best one to give you a sense of what the goalkeeper was looking at here. Clear view of it the whole time. Nobody in offside position bothers him. He dives for it. This player over here to the right of the screen has no impact on the goalkeeper. So as a result, we want to keep our flag down. I think there might be an overhead view as well. Give us just a second here. Yeah, this will be the last one we'll look at here. Gets headed there. These guys are in an offside position down here at the bottom, but no impact whatsoever. So again, another situation where we want to keep our flag down. So having looked at a couple of those, I want to look at this clip 
And I'm going to put up a simple poll, yes or no, do we want to put the flag up for offside? I'll give you a couple of looks at it. One more look at it this way, and then we'll watch a couple of the replays. We're going to be focused on this player right here out in the center. So when we watch our replays, again, we're going to focus on this player right out in the center of the field here. When the shot is taken, he is in an offside position. So that player, this player right here, number 15, offside position when the shot is taken. All right. I'll let this play through. Another good view here to see what the goalkeeper was looking at when the shot was taken. Last one here, and then I will put the poll up and ask you to make a decision. All right. So here comes the poll. Let's see what you think. All right, and I'll share the results here. So we have about three quarters of you saying, no, we don't want to raise the flag here, and about a quarter of us saying, yes, we want to raise the flag. So 75% of you, uh, according to FIFA, are correct. We do not want to raise the flag here for offside. The main reason being the distance that the offside player is from the goalkeeper and the fact that the goalkeeper does not have their line of sight obstructed. So as you can see, actually, let me go back to the last one here. Let me find the right one. As you can see from this angle, at the moment this shot is taken, goalkeeper has a very clear view. View is not obstructed. He's able to see it the whole time. And as you can see here, as the ball releases, the only player who ever really blocks his view is his own player, number five. Once the ball clears number five, the goalkeeper has a clear view of it and never loses his view of it as a result of number 15, who ducks, makes no attempt to play the ball, makes no clear action towards the ball, just ducks and gets out of the way. The goalkeeper sees it the whole way, reacts to it immediately, just isn't able to get there to make the save. So the, fa the factors from FIFA here and the considerations are the distance from the goalkeeper that this happens. So again, if we come back to the original clip, you can see here that this shot comes from a long way out. The goalkeeper sees it the entire way. And this player is at least 15 to 16 yards away from the goalkeeper, which means he's not directly in front of him blocking his view and there's no obvious impact on the goalkeeper by this player standing where he was. So because of the great distance, because the view of the goalkeeper was never obstructed by the player in the offside position, and because there was no movement towards the ball by the player in the offside position, hence no meaningful impact or obvious impact on the goalkeeper, we don't want to consider this an offside offense, and we want to keep our flag down here. Thank <laughs> you.
Any questions on the analysis here of interfering with an opponent? Excellent couple of questions here, and this is right on the money. The AR is not going to be able to tell whether or not the goalkeeper is able to see that or not. That's a very good point. I think the big thing here is recognizing that the attacker ducks out of the way, can tell you a lot of what you need to know. But at this level and at level even, you know, frankly, at a lot of the youth level now where players or referees are using comms, it's very easy to go in over the comms and say, hey, that player was in an offside position. Did they impact the view of the goalkeeper? Um, my hope would be that with a shot from this distance and with everything as clear as it is, that we would be able to, to know that, uh, particularly because the shot goes over the head of the attacker in this scenario. But if it's a little bit more complicated, then the easy thing to do as an AR is to stand at attention, bring the referee over, and say, hey, I had that player in an offside position. Did they block the view of the goalkeeper? So 100% right from those of you that, uh, that question this. The referee would need to be potentially involved in this decision. But my hope would be on a shot from this far out that clearly goes over the head of the attacker. Uh, we wouldn't need any teamwork on this one. This one's pretty straightforward. There are other examples where uh, it's a lot more tight and we would need to have some sort of communication, but this isn't one of those, I don't think. I think we can, we can get this one without bringing the referee over. Any other questions about some of the examples that we looked at? All right, I'll give you one more just for fun. This one was a, a bit more challenging since we picked up on this easier. Here's one more example of interfering with an opponent. So we go back and replay that one. So at the moment that number 20 plays this ball, we have this player in an offside position this player in an onside position. Now the player in the onside position is the one who ultimately plays this ball. But again, as it comes, we have both players running towards it. And then the player in the offside position stops, lets the player here go on to it. No problem there. So my question for you is given one player in the offside position and one player in the onside position both run towards the ball, what is your answer on this one? Let's have a look and see what everybody thinks. Couple more seconds here. All right. As anticipated, we we're a little bit closer together on this one. Uh, this one created a lot of discussion um, among national referee coaches uh, when we were starting to analyze this clip. Um, the two thirds of you who say no offside, uh, you are correct. We want to keep the flag down here. I will admit to being in the offside camp when I first looked at this one, because as a former goalkeeper, I think when you have two players running towards the ball, that's a little bit more challenging. But at the end of the day, FIFA's considerations here are um, the other player never actually makes an action to play the ball. Yes, runs towards it, but never actually makes a, a movement to play the ball. There's no swing of the leg. There's no, uh, caulking of the leg, anything that would make the goalkeeper think that that player was going to play the ball. And regardless, um, 
no matter which of the two players played the ball, the, the shot was going to come from the same place. So it has less of an impact on the goalkeeper. So because of those reasons, we want to keep the flag down, but definitely a, a more difficult decision to make here. Um, this is one where I don't think we, again, need to have the referee's involvement here. I think we can see this as ARs uh, pretty clearly enough. I don't think we need to, to get involved here. One more fun one. As you see here, we had a shot taken. At that moment that shot's taken, we have a player here blocking the view of the goalkeeper. Shot gets taken. Now the answer from FIFA here, I'm not gonna put up a poll. Um, the answer from FIFA here is that we do not need to call this player offside, but only because the only player who was impacted was the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper was not called upon to be involved in this play. So because the shot was blocked and never got to the goalkeeper, the only player who is material in, materially impacted in this play doesn't ever get involved in the play because it gets blocked by a defender before it gets there. Having said that, had this ball not been blocked by the defender but had gone on goal, we would absolutely want to call this because this is a perfect example of a player whose proximity to the goalkeeper is such that they're blocking their view. And in fact, I think it's, it's kind of funny that right before the shot gets taken, because the goalkeeper can't see, the goalkeeper actually jumps. He's actually up in the air when the shot gets taken because he's trying to jump up above this player to see where the ball is. So again, we talk a lot about the referee AR teamwork necessary to make a decision here. If you as an AR are recognizing that this player is in an offside position and you see that goalkeeper jump up like that to try to see past him, that's a little hint there for you that the goalkeeper is being uh, blocked from their, or their vision's being blocked and you're definitely going to have an offside flag here if the goalkeeper is called into action on this play or if the ball goes past him uh, and, and goes into the goal. We had a comment here, you can't see the AR. AR is right there in the top corner, but it doesn't matter if you can't see the AR here. We don't care what the AR actually did in this play. It doesn't matter. So, Question here, what if on the uh, very next possession, the rebound, the attacking team scores? doesn't matter because this player and this player were not at all involved in this play because of where the shot stopped. So again, you have to think about every time there's a touch on the ball, it resets the offside line. And so if this shot gets blocked, as it did, and then another shot comes, if another shot comes right here, we reset the offside line again. And so if this goalkeeper is still on the ground because he dove, this player was never involved in the play, the goalkeeper was not engaged on the first play, the offside gets reset when this player takes the, the second shot that is in the, the, uh, the, what's the word I'm looking for in the, the scenario we're recreating here. Um, when this shot gets taken, now we reevaluate offside. And the fact that the goalkeeper's on the ground is irrelevant. He's on the ground because he dove. That doesn't matter. We reset the offside and now his vision is not blocked. So we would not have offside. Question here, what if the deflection went into the goal? Then absolutely, we have offside here. So again, if right before, if this shot goes into the goal, the goalkeeper's ability to make a save is materially impacted by this player. The only reason we don't have offside here is because the shot is blocked and the goalkeeper is not called into action. Had that ball gone into the goal by any means necessary, meaning it, it goes directly in on the shot or it gets deflected in, the goalkeeper had no ability to try to make a save here because of the position of that attacking player who was in the offside position. So in this scenario, as it happens, we can keep our flag down 
because the goalkeeper was not called upon, which means they could not be materially impacted. But if that ball goes into the goal, we want to put the flag up and call offside. Any questions? We had one question here through the Q&A. Again, please don't use the Q&A feature. Um, but please clarify where is the ball placed for the restart? Where the ball is when the whistle blown? No, the restart technically happens at the point of the infraction. And so wherever the infraction occurred is where the restart takes place. And again, depending on which of the three different components of offside we're looking at, that infraction point would change. If it's interfering with play, then it's technically where the ball was touched when that player touches the ball. If it's interfering with an opponent, then it would be where the opponent was interfered with. And if it was um, gaining an advantage, it would be the point at which the player gained an advantage. So wherever the actual infraction occurs is where the restart is taken. That's actually why they changed the law a couple years ago now. Uh, if a player in the offside position when the ball is played um, comes back into their own half of the, of the field before playing the ball, you can actually restart the offside now in the opposite half of the field. That used to not be a thing. You couldn't have a restart for offside in the other half of the field, only in the, the half of the field where the attacking player could be offside. But now they recognize that if a player is one yard inside their uh, the opposing team's half when, they're, when the, the ball is passed and they come back into their own half to collect the ball, when they touch the ball is technically where the infraction happened and thus your restart can be in what would otherwise be the defending half of the field. So an interesting little nuance in the law. More often than not, we just put the ball where the offside line was and we move on because nobody really cares. It's not that important because uh, it's unlikely there's going to be any advantage gained by it. So any other questions on interfering with an opponent before we move on to gaining an advantage? Okay, then we'll move ourselves on into the clips that we'll look at for gaining an advantage. Again, just a reminder, this is where we're talking about uh, players getting the ball off of deflections or saves or uh, potentially having deliberate plays cancel out offside. So here we go. I'll just let this one play through. We'll get a couple of examples here. This next replay is actually the best one for us. So at the moment that shot is taken by Modric there, this player down here is in an offside position, as is this player. Both of these players are in offside positions when this shot is taken. And then as you can see, the shot comes off the shin of the defender and immediately goes to the player who is in the offside position. That's what we mean by gaining an advantage. This player has gained an advantage from being in an offside position off of a deflection. So some of the factors that we want to think about when deciding if something is a deflection or a deliberate play, distance from the point the ball was played by the attacker to the defender. How far away were they? Did they take a deliberate uh, motion or a deliberate play towards the ball? Did they make a playing action? So that's the biggest one that we have to, to consider here is, did they make a, a playing action by trying to kick the ball or was it a blocking action? So one can make a deliberate, <coughs> excuse me, a deliberate action, but if it's a blocking action, as this player did, the player deliberately puts his body here but he does it to block it. He does it to make a save. So this here, uh, with the proximity to the goal, we would consider to be a save because this is a shot. It deflects off of him to a player who's in the offside position. So even though one could argue this defender has done what he has done deliberately, this is not a deliberate play. He has not tried to pass the ball or kick the ball. He has blocked the ball from a short distance that would make it a deflection or a save, depending on how, what terminology you want to use. And thus, when the ball goes to the player in the offside position, we would put the flag up 
and we would call this offside. This player has gained an advantage from a deflection. Another example. So as you can see here, this is a bit of a nuanced clip and actually a difficult one. So this player down here plays the ball back. And at the moment that shot's taken by this player, he's in an offside position. The ball deflects off of the white player, off of their chest. And then the player in the offside position runs over. and plays the ball. So because this is a deflection here, and as you can see here, this is not a deliberate playing motion by the player. He just puts his body in front of the ball, deflects off of his rib cage, it looks like, and then goes to a player in the offside position. We would want to consider that player guilty of gaining an advantage. Question here, if defender is on the goal line, is this still offside? Yes, it is. A player off the field is still active, which means he's still behind the second to last opponent. So yes, this player, even though the defender's on the goal line, is considered to be in an offside position. That's why a player who is off the field, when the ball gets, when uh, you see this on corner kicks sometimes, the player off the field will touch the ball forward to a player who will stop it, and then he'll step on and play the ball. That player still needs to be considered guilty of an offside decision. So this player definitely is not guilt, or excuse me, is guilty of being in an offside position. And we want to call them for gaining an advantage off of this deflection. You can be guilty of being offside when you are off the field. <clears throat> Excuse me. So again, the key to this clip, though, is analyzing, is this a deliberate play or a deflection? And as you can see here, this is a blocking motion, deflection from the defender. We want to consider this offside. One more example here. Oops. Excuse me. So another good example here, a player hits him off the chest. At the moment this ball is played, Neymar down here is in an offside position. The ball gets deflected off the chest and goes to Neymar. So because he was in an offside position when the ball was played, that deflection does not negate the offside. And so we would consider Neymar here to have gained an advantage, and we want to put the flag up for offside. So those are a couple examples of a player who has gained an advantage. Now we're going to have a look at what we might consider to be a deliberate play. Again, the key thing with all three of those is when the ball was played by the attacker, when it hit the defender, it was from close proximity and it was in a blocking motion or a deflecting motion not a deliberate playing motion by the player. We contrast that with this one. So we can assume because he's out of the frame that this player was in an offside position when the ball was played. Let's just make that assumption that when the ball is played here from deep, the player is in an offside position. So the question we have to ask ourselves is when the ball is deflected here, 
or touched, we'll not use the word deflection, when this ball is played here, is this a deliberate play or is this a deflection? So let me have, uh, I'm just curious some opinions here. I'm gonna put a poll up. If you think this was a deliberate play, then that would say no offside. If you think this was, or excuse me, that would say yes offside. If you think this was a deliberate play, you would say no offside. Let's see what everybody thinks on this one. If this is deliberate, say no. If this is not deliberate, say yes. Couple more seconds. All right, we're in good shape here, I think. 75% of us say that this is a deliberate action and therefore we should not raise the flag. That would be correct. So the key consideration here in why this is considered to be a deliberate play, even though one would argue it just sort of nicks off of his foot and it's not a very good play, the biggest factor here is the distance. This ball travels a good 60 yards before it gets played. And this player runs that entire distance, jumps out, and very deliberately does this. This is not a blocking motion. This is not uh, a defensive posture where he's at a short distance and he's trying to, to just block the ball. He has made a deliberate decision to run jump and try to kick this ball that's a deliberate act a deliberate kicking motion that he's not done it successfully doesn't factor into our equation this is not a blocking motion this is something where he has run a distance and gone and tried to kick the ball in a very deliberate way which then negates our offside so a question here deliberate but very difficult to hold the flag down no it's not actually because when you hold the flag, all you say is that player touched the ball deliberately, it negates the offside. So this is important. This is why we want to hold our flags sometimes to see who's going to play the ball. Because if we put the flag up right away and then this player jumps in and does this, now we have a problem because we put our flag up and we create confusion. So this is why if the ball is up in the air, if we're not 100% sure who's going to play the ball, this is why we wait. Because this is absolutely a scenario where FIFA does not want the flag to go up because this is definitely a deliberate action that should negate an offside decision here. So we would not consider this attacker to be offside because the defender has made a deliberate action and has played the ball and that would negate the offside. One last example and I'll run another poll to see what you think once we viewed it. So again, at the moment this ball gets played, this player is in the offside position. So this player is in the offside position and then comes back, participates in the play. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, is this action by this defender a deliberate play so again using the factors we talked about what do we think here watch it one more time and then i will offer up the poll all right tell us what you think few more seconds.
All right. And the large majority of you, majority of you say, no, we should not raise the flag. You are correct. Because this player, even though he doesn't do it well, because there, there's a good distance from where the ball gets played to where the defender is, because the defender takes a solid three or four or five steps and then makes a deliberate action to put his foot out, we would consider this to be a deliberate play. So again, the big factor here is going to be distance. One would argue that this is a blocking motion, but again, remember that the only way that you can negate offside with a deflection or a block is if it's a save. The only deliberate action that would still negate offside, or excuse me, that would still allow for a player to be offside is if it's a save. For it to be a save, it needs to be closer to the goal. This is not a shot on goal, so therefore, if this deliberate action were made and we can still consider this player to be offside, it would only be if this player was making a save because the proximity to goal is not there, then we consider this to be a deliberate action that thus negates offside. So we want to keep the flag down in that scenario. Any questions on that analysis? Looks like most of us were pretty much on the same page there. All right, then that draws to a close the clips that I wanted to look at this evening. Um, I really wanted to spend the time focused in on the difference between interfering with an opponent and gaining an advantage. Obviously, when you're putting your flag up, you don't need to know which one you are, uh, or you don't need to tell anybody which one you're using uh, to make that decision. But I think it's very important for us to know the difference between those three different offside scenarios, interfering with play, interfering with an opponent, and gaining an advantage. Um, I'll follow up at some point for this group, and we can do an offside test where we actually have to use those three factors uh, and, uh, and decide which one it is for the purpose of, uh, of uh, analysis here. Question here, can we, can we cover some rebound situations? We actually did. Uh, most of those that we looked at, uh, the first three were technically rebounds off of a player. Substitute the goalpost with any of those first three clips that we looked at under gaining an advantage, and it's the same factor. If a shot gets taken and it comes off a goalpost, um, it hasn't touched a defender yet, and so therefore the original snapshot that you took at the time the shot was taken still exists. So coming off of a, of a goalkeeper, same thing. If it's deflected, then we're still looking at the same scenarios. So those first three clips, if you want to go back and watch the recording of this uh, webinar, the first three clips that we looked at under gaining an advantage, uh, that'd be the same, the same things we'd be looking at for rebounds. Question here, are these webinars saved on the net and available to be seen at a later time? Yes, as always, we record these and within a day or so, they'll be posted on the CNRA YouTube channel. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with that, I would suggest you go on to YouTube and search CNRA. You will find our YouTube channel where nearly all of the webinars that we do are recorded and posted online. I think there's about 15 or 20 of them up there now by now, and we keep adding more. We also had a discussion today with our staff about getting some of these on the homepage of the CNRA website. And I imagine within a couple of days that will be done as well. So like I said, just go to YouTube, you'll find our channel. You can subscribe to the channel, which will give you notices anytime something gets published. So again, are there any questions? Question here, an attacker is in an offside position. He comes back in his own half and gets a ball from his goalkeeper. Is he onside? Depends on what the restart was from. If the ball was in live play and the goalkeeper kicks it and he starts in an offside position and is, uh, but comes back in his own half, then yes, you would still call him offside. If it's coming from a goal kick, then no, because you can't be offside on a goal kick. But if it is from a live play and the goalkeeper kicks the ball, the player was in the offside position in the attacking half, but comes back into his own half to collect the ball, yes, because a player is uh, judged to be in offside position at the moment the ball is played by the uh, teammate. Any other questions? 
All right, then thanks everybody and have a good night.